No matter the signal type, whether it be simple CW signals or complex digitally modulated signals, every signal has some amount of distortion. Signal distortion is important to characterize in your system because it can result in energy at unintended frequencies. However, being able to clearly see low-level signals is difficult to do, especially if they are buried beneath the noise floor of your signal analyzer. There are several ways to improve the dynamic range of a signal analyzer. Today, we'll discuss how you can optimize your signal analyzer's dynamic range so that you can more easily see low-level signals. My name is... What the... You keep turning off the light! What's up, everyone? The name is Nick Ben, and I'm an engineer here at Keysight. And welcome to the fourth episode of What the RF. In the last episode, we discussed what a signal analyzer measures and the very important spurious emissions measurement that many of us make in our product development cycle. I highly suggest checking out that episode to learn how to avoid interfering with devices and neighboring channels by clicking on the card above or the link in the description below. In today's episode, we're gonna discuss signal analyzer resolution bandwidth. One of the most frequently asked questions we get is, how can I get more dynamic range with my signal analyzer? One tool in your dynamic range toolkit is resolution bandwidth. So today, we're gonna to talk about both the trade-offs when setting resolution bandwidth on a signal analyzer and how it can help you see low-level signals. Every signal analyzer, like this one, has a certain amount of dynamic range, depending on how you define dynamic range. But what exactly does that mean? By definition, dynamic range is the ratio, expressed in dB, of the largest to the smallest signals simultaneously present at the input of the spectrum analyzer that allows the measurement of the smaller signal to a given degree of uncertainty. The signal of interest can either be harmonically or non-harmonically related. The dynamic range specification determines whether or not low-level signals will be visible in the presence of large signals, and therefore it is one of the most important performance figures for a signal analyzer. Another example of dynamic range can be seen in photography. If we compare these two photos that I took, the details on the shadows and highlights are a lot less than the photo on the left, taken with my phone, versus the one on the right, taken with a DSLR camera. In fact, we can see an object sitting on top of our signal analyzer in the DSLR photo. We can confidently say that the DSLR gives us a higher resolution or detail in contrast to the shadows and highlights in our image. Similarly, having more dynamic range on our signal analyzer gives us a good picture, pun intended, of low level signals like the harmonics we'll be looking at today. Now, when testing your signal, one of the many things you wanna check for is its harmonics. However, a signal's harmonics can be difficult to spot sometimes because they can get buried in noise. So if we can improve our system's dynamic range and lower the noise floor, then we'll have better visibility of those low level signals. We all learned in engineering school that using a narrower resolution bandwidth lowers the displayed average noise level, or DANL, of the spectrum analyzer and increases the dynamic range. So let's see if we can use this knowledge to our advantage. In our setup here, we're using a signal generator to play the role of our DUT, and it's transmitting a signal at one gigahertz. Looking at our signal analyzer, we see our signal and a bunch of noise. There doesn't appear to be any distortion, so lucky us, we have a beautifully performing device. Yeah, right. We know there's always some amount of distortion. I would expect to at least see the second and third order harmonics, but because the noise floor is so high, it's probably buried somewhere in there. This is where we want to improve our dynamic range, and one of the quickest and easiest methods is to narrow the resolution bandwidth of our analyzer. Looking at the image now on screen, we see a plot of the dynamic range versus distortion and noise. We know that the analyzer's noise level, or noise floor, is a parameter that we can adjust and have some flexibility with. We want to lower this noise floor and simultaneously improve dynamic range so that we can see low-level signals. In this case, our fundamental signal is harmonics. To lower this noise, we can adjust the resolution bandwidth, or RBW setting. The RBW setting is a fundamental analysis parameter that's important when separating crucial spectral components from the noise floor. The RBW also determines the FFT bin size, and the smaller it is, the better resolution we get of a signal and its sidebands become visible. So let's see how adjusting the RBW can help us easily distinguish the harmonics of our signal from the noise contributed by the analyzer itself, or the DUT, in this case, our signal generator right here. Presently, the RBW is set at 100 kilohertz. By lowering the RBW to one kilohertz, we can now clearly see the second and third harmonics of the signal. However, you'll notice that the sweep speed has become slower. 
Whereas earlier it took 18.9 milliseconds, it now takes 14.2 seconds. So this is a good reminder that while using a narrower resolution bandwidth helps you see low level signals, it also has an important trade-off, slower sweep speeds. Sweep rates are generally proportional to the square of the resolution bandwidth. So wider resolution bandwidth produces a much faster sweep across a given span compared to a narrower setting. If you choose a signal analyzer with fast sweep capability, such as this one next to me, then there isn't as much degradation in the sweep speed. So what we effectively did by lowering the resolution bandwidth is lower the analyzer's noise level. As a result, we've improved our second and third order dynamic range, which enables us to see our signals low level harmonic signals. To further improve dynamic range by reducing the analyzer's internally generated distortion products, you can increase the attenuation while decreasing RBW. Stay tuned for that in a future video. Today I've shown you one method for optimizing your dynamic range so that you can see low level signals more easily. Using the RBW only works for certain types of signals, so when dealing with other signals this would not be appropriate to use on its own. For more on this and other spectrum analysis topics, check out the Spectrum Analysis Basics application note in the description below. But more importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our Keysight Labs YouTube channel and follow us on our RF Facebook page. All right, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much. What the? <laughs>